In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, yes. We take power. We take dominion. We take authority today. Let the glory of the Lord permeate this house. Somebody shout it to him. Somebody give him praise today. We come to worship him. We come to praise him. We come to lift him up on high. Amen. Let's worship him in song this morning. No more chains, no more bondage, I am free. Yeah. Hallelujah. No more shackles, no more shackles, no, no more chains, no more, no more bondage, bondage, I am free. I am free. Oh, no more shackles, hallelujah. No, no more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage, I am free. Shackles, 
No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage, I am free. Just like the 
day of Pentecost, the wind is blowing again. The wind is blowing again. The wind is blowing again. Just like the day of Pentecost, the wind is blowing again. First one, sing it with me now. There was a crowd gathered round from all over town. They came to see what it was all about. There was a sound that came down from the upper room where the Holy Ghost was being poured out. It sounded just like the roar of a mighty wind as it fell on every one of them. The wind that blew at Pentecost, praise God, it's blowing again. Yeah, the wind is blowing again. The wind is blowing again. Just like a day of Pentecost. The wind is blowing again. The wind is blowing again. The wind is blowing again. And it's just like the day of Pentecost. The wind is blowing again. The wind is blowing again. Just like the day of Pentecost. The wind is blowing again. It's blowing again, again. Just like a day of Pentecost, the wind is blowing again. Just like a day of Pentecost, the wind is blowing again. Just like a day of Pentecost, the wind is blowing again. some church in here hallelujah two people were baptized the wind is blowing again it doesn't have to be on Sunday only the wind is blowing again through the week on our jobs people that we're talking to people that we're witnessing to God is doing something hallelujah praise God See daughters have to dance to celebrate with all we have and we dance to thank you for mercy. Your glory daughters have to shout to lift your name in all the earth and we shout to praise you for glory. It's the overflow of our forgiveness. Soul. And now we see you, God. Our hearts cannot face silent, and we'll be a dancing generation, dancing because of your great mercy, Lord. Your great mercy, Lord. And we'll be a shouting generation, shouting because of your great glory, Lord. Your great glory, Lord, and we'll be a dancing generation, dancing because of your great mercy, Lord, your great mercy, Lord, and we'll be a shouting generation, shouting because of your great glory, Lord, your great glory, Lord. Celebrate with all we have and we'll dance to thank you for mercy. To glory taught us how to shout, to lift your name in all the earth and we'll shout to praise you for glory. It's the overflow of our forgiven soul. And now we see you, God. Our hearts cannot stay silent. And we'll be a dancing generation. Dancing because of your great mercy, Lord. Your 
great mercy, Lord. And we'll be a shouting generation, shouting because of your great glory, Lord. Your great glory, Lord. And we'll be a dancing generation, dancing because of your great mercy, Lord. Your great mercy, Lord, and we'll be a shouting generation, shouting because of your great glory, Lord, your great glory, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody clap your hands. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. We seem we are free this morning. How many of you are free? Hello. Is anybody free this morning? One, two, three. Is anybody free this morning in this place? We'll see later. The wind is blowing again. Like the day of Pentecost. And now we say we're going to celebrate. But you know what? Until you realize this is not only wars, but it's a reality in our lives today. We're going to have revival. One, two. We're going to have revival. Amen. 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 Are you ready for revival? Are you ready for revival? Are you ready for the Bible? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm ready. I'm ready for the Bible. Can you hear the Savior's call calling you to praise? Come on, God, of where you are. Your nets, get ready for a catch, get ready for revival. First you must believe, first you must believe, then you will receive, get ready for revival. Open up your nets, get ready for a catch, get ready for revival. First you must believe, first you must believe, then you will receive, get ready for revival. And you hear the Savior is called, calling you to praise. Come up out of where you are to a higher place. Leave your burdens at the cross. There's no worries there. Even in your darkest hour, even in your darkest hour, He is always there. And to hear the Savior's call, calling you to pray.
Jesus Christ. Yes, I want it. Yes, I want it. Yes, I want the fire. Yes, I want it. Yes, I want it. Yes, I want it. Yes, I want the fire. Yes, I want it. Yes, I want it. Yes, I want the fire. For revival, open up your nets. Get ready for the catch. Get ready for revival. Touch you must believe. Touch you must believe. Then you will receive. Get ready for revival. Open up your nets. Open up your nets. Get ready for a catch. Get ready for revival. When you hear the Savior's call, calling you to pray, He's calling you this morning. Come about of where you are. Somebody, you let you go for some this morning and praise Leave you. Leave your burdens at the cross. There's no worries there. Even in your darkest hour, He is always there. Where you are, no matter how far, it is time. It's time. Get ready for revival. Get ready for revival. Open up your face. Get ready for a catch. Get ready for revival. You must believe, then you will receive. Get ready for revival. Open up your nets. Open up your nets. Get ready for a catch. Get ready for revival. Oh, hallelujah. First you must believe, then you will receive. Get ready for revival. Can't you feel it? Can't you feel it? Can you feel Come on. the fire? Lead your voice. Say. Can, can you feel it? Can you? Can, can you? you feel it? Can you feel the fire? No. Do you want it? Do you want it? Do you want it? Do you want the fire? Do you want it? Do you want it? Do you want the fire? Come on, talk to your neighbor and say, Do you want it? Do you want it? Do you want it? Come on, don't be afraid this morning. Don't be afraid. Do you want it? Ask your neighbor, do you want this fire? Do you want the fire? One more time, do you want it? Do you want it? I can kill you this morning. Yes, I Come on, somebody. Yes. Yes, I want it. Yes, yes I want it. Yes. Yes. Come on. Yes, I want it. Yes, I want it. Yes, I want the fire. We're gonna keep going until somebody finishes. Yes, I want it. Yes, I want it. Yes, I want the fire. Do you want it this morning? Do you? Yes, I want it. Yes, I want the fire. Come on, say it loud this morning. Yes, I want it. Yes, I want it. Yes, I want the fire. Oh, yes. Yes, I want it. I want it. Yes, I want it. Yes, I want the fire. Yes, I want it. Yes, I want it. Shut up, Yes, I want the fire. Yes, I want it. Yes, I want it. Yes, I want it. Yes, I want it. Yes, I want the fire. Come on. Convince yourself. Yes, I want it. Yes, I want it. Yes, I want the fire. Yes, I want it. Yes, I want it. Yes, I want it. Yes, I want the fire. Come on, let me kill you. Yes, I want it. Yes, I want it. Yes, I want the fire. Get ready for revival. Open up your nest. Get ready for a catch. Get ready for revival. First you must believe. First you must believe. Then you will receive. Get ready for revival. Get ready. Hoping that you rest. Get ready for the catch. Get ready for revival. Get ready. Get ready for revival. Praise him. Praise him.
Praise God. Are you ready for revival? Are you ready for the fire to fall? John the Baptist said, oh, yes. and he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Anybody re ready to get out of the normal Christianity and catch on fire? Anybody ready to be like Jeremiah with fire shut up in your bones? Thank you. Praise God. Yes, I want it. Yes, I want it. Yes, I want it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, I want it. Praise God. Hallelujah. You got to want it. The promises of God. Name if if my people would humble themselves, if if they would pray, if if they would seek my face, if if they would turn from their wicked ways. Do you want it? Do you want it? Do you want it? Yes, I want it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Sister Gimp is sending praise to God, saying, thanking God for abundant blessings of love that he's poured out in her family. And many, many, many answered prayers. Amen. We know that God is always answers our prayers. Amen. And it's a wonderful thing to see them come about as we have prayed. Amen. We're praying this morning for Sister Mendez. She's not feeling well. Praying for Sister Vogler that God would give her a safe trip to Texas. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Praying for Sister Sange Lewis to pray for her after her family members. Uh, they'll be burying her mother and uh, others this Saturday. We know that God is comfortable, yes, can comfort Jesus. us Thank through you. the middle of all of our problems. Praying for Fred and Bleedy as they travel overseas. Amen. This is their one-year anniversary, and they decided to take a trip out of the country. Amen. Amen. We want to pray that they're safe all the way through and all the way back in Jesus' name. Amen. I was walking the dog this morning, and our neighbor across the street asked me to pray for his wife. She was taken this morning to an urgent care center. It didn't sound uh, super serious, but we've been trying to witness to this family for the 10 years we've lived there, and uh, we're just going to believe that God's going to touch them. Amen. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Amen. Praise him. Bonnie Connor is her name. Anybody here have a need you'd like to make known by an uplifted hand? God knows exactly what that need represents. Amen. Let's go to him together as the family of God. If you have need in your body, you're, you can make your way forward. We'll pray with you. Amen. Lord, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for being so present, so, so much of a help in a time of need. Thank you for being so real here today. God, we want your presence and your blessing to fall upon us. We want your glory to come down in the house of the Lord here today. Minister, Lord, to the needs that are represented here. Touch Sister Mendes. Heal her body, God, today. Rebuke the affliction and the pains and the aches that's come upon her. Minister to Sister Vogler. Keep her safe, God. Set angels round about her as she travels. Bring her safely home to, this, to her house, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. God, for Sister Songay Lewis, God, let the power of God and the comfort of God go to that family as they bury their mother. Let the glory of God minister and keep them strong in faith. God in the midst of their loss. Lord, minister to Fred and Lady as they traveled out of the country, God. Bring them safely home. God, give them a time of fellowship, God, and of renewing and rest and relaxation. Let the glory of the Lord be there with them. Touch Bonnie Connor today. Let healing virtue minister to her. God, let the anointing and the power of God have its way. And Lord, here in this building today, we give you praise for what you're going to do. Minister the word to our hearts today. And God, most of all, we lift up your name. God, because we want to have revival. We want to be full of the power, full of the Holy Ghost, full of fire. And God, we give you the glory in Jesus' wonderful name. 
Amen. Could we thank him, church? Could we just give him praise for what he's doing? Hallelujah. I want you to stay there, right where you are. And I want you to praise God according to the miracle you need this morning. What do you need this morning? It's financial problems. It's I want to invite you to come here and please God according to the miracle that you need this morning. Does anybody need a miracle this morning? Come on. Remendez, come on over here. I know there is some radical praiser here. And I want to declare Almighty God is here for us. Hallelujah. Great and Almighty is our God. Do you believe this? Great and Almighty is our God.
lift your voices and give him the praise that's due his wonderful name today. Jesus, you are great and you are mighty this morning. I praise your mighty name. Hallelujah. Thank you for the victory, God. Thank you for your power in my life. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for healing me. Thank you for opening doors and making my pathway straight, oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you for provision today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to give him some praise today. Somebody ought to shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. This is the day that the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to be glad today because my God is in charge of everything. Hallelujah. 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 Do you love him this morning? I said, do you love him this morning? Is he a great God in your life? Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm glad that I know who Jesus is this morning. Amen. We're happy to have all our first-time guests with us this morning. Let's give them a round of applause today. Thank you for coming and sharing in our service this morning as we worship the Lord. We have a little gift bag for you on your way out. If you'll stop by the front desk, there's some chocolate, a coffee cup, a book, and a couple other things in there I think you'll like. And that's our way of saying thank you for coming and worshiping the Lord with us. And we hope you will come back. Amen. Hallelujah. Why don't you take a moment, turn around, greet one another. Let's welcome one another this morning in the house of the Lord. Amen. Come on up here and tell us a little bit about Friend Day. Amen. God bless Brother Mendez this morning. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. I don't know about you, but I feel the Holy Ghost here. Can we just give him some praise? Amen. Uh, he's doing something. His presence is here. And I know there's folks that are going to be changed today because of this. Amen. Praise God. But I just want to remind everybody that November uh, November 9th is Friends Day. And the purpose we're doing for Friends Day, we want to invite your friends, your relatives, your co-workers, your neighbors. If we can invite dogs, we bring them too. But we want humans. Why? Because it's an opportunity for them to come and know Jesus. Amen? And accept him as Lord and Savior of their lives. I got family members that don't go to church. They do what they want to do. And I'm praying for them and I invite them to come yeah. over here. Amen? Last Sunday, I don't know if you guys remember, but you saw some guests that came in that sat next to me. That was my boss for my job. I went to my phone book. I mailed him just like I said I did, and he came. Amen. And I brag about my boss. Hey, this is my boss. This is my boss. And he liked it that. Amen. That's what you got to do. Invite your boss, your neighbor. It's, it works. It takes a little bit of work, but it works. Amen. I got the ushers that are going to pass these, these, friendly, these friendly contracts. Um, what you do is you fill out your name, you fill out their information, and try to get a commitment from them to come. There's four of them right here. You can got four friends, neighbors, brother, anybody, amen, that needs Jesus, amen. amen. Grab one, fill it out, and make a commitment to bring them. If you have to go pick them up, so be it, amen. amen. If, 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 you need, if they need a reminder because they'll forget, remind them a day prior. Hey, remember? Hey, I'm about ready to pick you up, okay? That's all we had to do. And let's pray about it. Let's pray that people get baptized in the name of Jesus in that tank. 
because it's just one soul come, it was all worth it. Amen? Amen? Because that's one other person for the kingdom of God. Amen? And we don't got much time. I believe Jesus is at the door. He, he, he's there soon. So we got to be busy for him. We just can't sit around and just, after church and just go home and just be like normal folks. We're not normal. We're peculiar people in Jesus' name. Amen? So let's get busy. We got about three, three more weeks left. Three more weeks. Give out all those cars we got. There's no reason to save 100 or 2 in the church because after that, we don't need them anymore. We got to throw them away. Give them out. Amen. And I need people to come on Saturdays from 11 o'clock, outreach at 11 o'clock, from 11 to 1 hour. Can, can your folks commit to one hour? I know we're busy with kids and housework and so forth. One hour from 11 to 12, I'll be here. I need a few more folks to come. We need a little bit more numbers to, cut, to, to reach a few more of those communities that we have surrounding the church area from 11 to 12, okay? Thank you very much, and God bless you. Yeah, thank you. Amen. God bless Brother Mendez and his efforts for outreach. Amen. Brother Valerie, you want to come right quick and tell us about Friday night? Amen. Hallelujah. God bless Brother Valerie, our Amen. Sunday school director. Yeah. Praise the Lord, church. God Praise in the Lord. place this morning. I feel good. I feel the Holy Ghost. Amen. Friday night, mm -hmm. our Hallelujah Fall Festival, starting at 630. And when you get here at 630, we want you to come in the sanctuary. We're going to pray. We're going to have worship before we go out, and we're going to play some games. We've got plenty of candy for the kids. We have lots of games, lots of fun. And who knows? You might walk away with something you didn't know you are going to get. <laughs> All right. Amen, so come out with us. Have a great time. And by the way... Sunday school is growing. Amen. 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 Check the roster last night. Up there, we got 55 kids on our Sunday school roster now. Amen. And I want to give God praise for that. Amen. So praise him with us. Amen. He's about to fall over with joy. Amen. Give God a clap offering of praise. He's doing great things in our midst. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm glad to be part of the family of God. Amen. Praise God. We're going to receive our offering in just a minute. So as you're preparing to give, I just have a couple more announcements. One, we will have our leadership training class to this uh, afternoon or evening, whatever you call five o'clock. Amen. For all you that are in our leadership training class, please come and be here at the church. Amen. Five o'clock. Also, new members class at four o'clock. Can you say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Amen. Brother Valerie's already told you about Friday night. Also, there's a ladies' retreat Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Amen. And it's in Annapolis. And my wife is taking the church van and taking all the ladies that would like to go. So meet here at the church. I believe she said 6 o'clock on Thursday. You'd like to go with her to Annapolis. Amen. The services will be Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday morning. Amen. So, amen. If you want to be, if you want to go, just show up here at the church and be ready to go. Amen. Praise God. He already told you about friend day. The Bible says, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one to another. Amen. It is my belief this morning that if you really love your friend, you'll tell them about Jesus Christ. Wouldn't it be a tragic thing to stand before God one day and your friend point his finger at us and say, why didn't you tell me? Amen. I don't want to be guilty of that. I want to share Jesus with all my friends. One way you can do that is bring them to friend day. Amen. Amen. Brother Brooks also set it up so you can email them or send them. I don't know how it all works, Twitter and Facebook and all that. If you need more information, see Brother Mendez or Brother Brooks, amen, and they'll be happy to give you more instructions in that area, amen. amen. I'm one of them old guys. I don't know how to do all that stuff, amen. Praise God. Would you stand with me this morning? Let's pray over the offering as they sing a song. You can march and come and give. Father, I thank you this morning for your blessings and your goodness. I pray today, bless the gift and the giver. Lord, I pray to help us to use it for your honor and glory. Help us to win souls for the kingdom. Multiply it for your use, O oh Lord. Not our will, but thine be done. I give you praise in Jesus' name. And everybody shout amen. 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 Come and give to the Lord this morning. Oh! 
Lift him up this morning. Praise his name. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. I'm going to bless his holy name. I'm going to lift him up. I'm going to glorify him. Come on, church. I think you can do a little bit better than that. Hallelujah. We have come to bless him. We have come to praise him. Amen. Hallelujah. Sister Donna, why don't you come up front for me this morning? Amen. And uh, I want you all to stand and just put your hand out towards Donna this morning. She's going in to have surgery for a tumor this week. God is able to heal her of that tumor. Amen. Praise Amen. You. I know she is stressed about it, but God can do anything. Hallelujah. Lift your hands unto the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus. We touch and agree and touch Sister Donna this morning. I rebuke this tumor in her body, God. Take power. We take dominion. We take authority. For you said by your stripes that we are healed. In the name of Jesus, command healing virtue to flow from her head to her toes. Even right now, God, in the name of Jesus, Bless her today, heal her today, that the hand of the Lord be upon her and the peace of God upon her. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. It's not by our might, it's not by our power, but it's in the name of Jesus today. Let healing virtue go forth. Give God the praise this morning. Give God the praise today. Thank you for your touch, Lord. Thank you for your healing. Thank you for your virtue today. You're the great I am. I love you, Lord. I praise you this morning. Hallelujah. You may be seated in Jesus' name. It's such a glorious thing to be a child of God. Amen. How many of you are glad that you know who Jesus is today? Hallelujah. I'm so blessed. I am so blessed. You are blessed whether you realize it or not. That God is on your side. He's a present help in the time of trouble. He's a peace that passes all understanding. He said, call, come unto me, call unto me. He's here to answer your every need this morning. Hallelujah. There's needs in the house. I can feel it in my spirit this morning. And I've come to tell somebody, if you'll just get beyond your trouble and lift your hand to Jesus, Jesus is here to meet you and to take care of that need that's in your life. Somebody said, wouldn't it be great to live back in the days of the apostles? I'm not so sure that's a good idea. You know, we have been blessed to see signs and wonders and miracles in this church. I'm not going to take a long time because we have a preacher this morning, but 
we have seen the dead come back to life. We have seen people healed of cancer. Amen. Hallelujah. It's not a God 2,000 years ago that only did it in Peter and Paul's day. But I'm here to tell you, he's doing it today. He's doing it today. My God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if he'll do it for Peter and Paul, I want to tell somebody, he'll do it for you. He'll do it for you. Hallelujah. The scripture says, according to your faith, so be it unto you. You've got to believe that he will do it. I said, you got to believe he will do it. Because if there's anything that hinders the move of God in our lives, it's unbelief. I don't want to be an unbeliever. I want to be a believer. How about you? Clap your hands to the Lord one more time, giving praise today. Hallelujah. We are so blessed again to have brother and sister Gratian with us in service and their daughter, daughter Carrie Sue. Second name, amen. Praise God, but they've been with us before. They are fellow countrymen of my wife from the land down under. But Robin, you finally got right, turned right side up so your blood will flow right. Not walking around upside down. No, I'm just teasing them. Amen. They're going to get me back for that, I know. But we're so privileged and blessed to have them with us. They are missionaries to the country of Vanuatu. Many of you knew Brother Sherry, who was my wife's pastor, who used to be the missionary there. They have turned the work over to Brother and Sister Gratian. They were, before the Gratians went to uh, Vanuatu, they were missionaries in Papua New Guinea. Amen. They've seen fabulous things happen at the hand of God. Amen. And we're just going to get out of the way and turn the service over to Brother Gratian. He's going to come and minister to you. I think he's got some slides for you. Would you give them a great big round of applause? God bless Brother and Sister Gratian. Hallelujah. Why don't we do that one more time for God this morning? Hallelujah. He is worthy of our praise. He is worthy of our honor. We can never exalt him too much. We can never praise him too much. Hallelujah. I don't want any stone taking my place when it comes to worshiping and exalting him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I really believe with all of my heart that as the lights go down and the curtain starts to fall on this platform that we know as the earth, and as time begins to get ready to reach its final, its final existence and we enter eternity, I believe with all of my heart we are going to see God do things and work miracles and save souls like this world has never seen before. The stage is being set, brothers and sisters. The darker the hour, the greater the light shines. The stronger the storm, the more significant and noticeable the peace always is. And so whether it's your life as an individual or whether it's globally as a community and as a world, let me tell you, Jesus knows where we're at and he knows how to step in and take control of every situation. Hallelujah. We serve a great God, a mighty God. We say that many times without even thinking about it. But, oh, if we stop and think about the greatness of our God, nothing does compare with Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brother Overton and each and every one of you, thank you so much for having us here this morning. It's our honor and our privilege to be here again and uh, to minister the Word of God. You have a great church and I, it's changed over the last five years. It was about five years ago we were here. I see more people. I see progress. Hallelujah. And that's a wonderful thing. And I see some of the same people. And that is wonderful. Hallelujah. The only question God has on His return is, will He find faith in the earth? And it's wonderful to see people that keep living for God year after year, week after week, day after day. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. How many of you know where Vanuatu is? Let's fix that problem just real quickly. Hallelujah. Uh, 
it's in the middle of the South Pacific. I'm going to jump forward to a couple of slides here and I'll jump back. That's the beauty of having my own control. Hallelujah. A thousand miles off the east coast of Australia, about 20 years ago, just over, we were called, first of all, to the beautiful country of Solomon Islands. And uh, we were there on Guadalcanal. Many of you would have heard of Guadalcanal, uh, very famous for World War II. And we served God there for quite a while. Then we went back and passed it in the city of Cairns. And last time we were here, God had called us to the beautiful country of Papua New Guinea. We lived 5,200 feet above sea level up in the mountains there. It was the wild west of the South Pacific. It was like stepping back in time. But oh my, the revival that God is having amongst the people of Papua New Guinea. We expected to spend the rest of our life there. But three years ago, God called us to the beautiful country of Vanuatu. And Vanuatu is located, like I said, a thousand miles off the east coast of Australia. It's a group of 83 islands. We live in the capital, uh, the city of Port Vila. And this country was discovered by a Portuguese explorer in 1605. He had been sent to find Australia. But when he landed on this top left-hand side island, he thought it was Australia. And so he, as he planted, he was uh, exploring under the Spanish flag. As he planted the flag, he declared, this is the great south land of the Holy Spirit. And he named this first island Espiritu Santo. And the next island he got to, he named the island of Pentecost. So we live in a country, brothers and sisters, known as the great south land of the Holy Spirit. We even have an island called Holy Spirit and an island called Pentecost. Praise God. So if we can't believe God for revival, we need to find an altar somewhere. Hallelujah. And God is doing great things. You may have, uh, you may have heard of bungee jumping that began on the island of Pentecost. And uh, Pentecost is quite famous for that. People come from all over the world every year to watch them do it. But let me tell you, last year on the island of Pentecost, there was over a dozen souls that were filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit and had their own Pentecost. And just two months ago, when we were back for National Conference, on the weekend there, we saw over 120 people filled with their own personal experience and filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. God is doing great things in the great south land of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. And like I said, we didn't really ever expect uh, to leave Papua New Guinea, but God has His way. And I'm going to ask my sweetheart to come and share this morning and testify and share just a little bit about how God did uh, move us from, Vanuatu, uh, from Papua New Guinea to Vanuatu. Praise God. Pastor Overton, so honored to be here this morning and everybody that has made us feel so welcome. We are staying with the Overtons and we are so thankful for that. I just wish my good friend could be here this morning, but she can't. She's at work. And so that's all right. Praise God. Let me say thank you before I testify to the ladies in this church for raising funds for Mother's Memorial. Thank you for my appliances. If you know much about Mother's Memorial and you're involved, you know that Mother's Memorial buys missionary wives appliances. So thank you for my stove, my refrigerator, my washing machine and my clothes dryer. Praise God. Mother's Memorial funds also support foreign Bible school students. Thank you so much. We could not keep the doors of our Bible school open if it wasn't for Mother's Memorial funds. I, I just cannot express how important those funds are. Thank you so much. And I don't see a lot of youth. I think they've all gone to Sunday school. But let, you can let them know. I said thank you for raising funds for She's for Christ. Thank you for keeping the mission in motion, putting wheels on the gospel. Praise God. Thank you so much. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to 
give you an expected end. Brothers and sisters, I do not know where I would be today if I did not know Jesus Christ. I'm so thankful I know him because you know, as human beings, we do not know what the next moment of our life holds. We have no guarantee that we will be privileged enough to put our head on the pillow tonight. But there is great peace when we can take our frail human life and place it into the hand of Almighty God. Because He lives outside of time. He lives in eternity. He's already been to your tomorrow and visited it. He has measured it. He has weighed it up. And it's going to be okay. Yes, there's going to be trials. His Word tells us that. But you know, when our life is placed into His hands, He takes the very things that the devil would try to use to destroy us. He turns them around for our good. We grow through it. And He is glorified at the same time. And the neat thing about God is if He hadn't allowed us to walk through those trials, He could not use us in the way that He wants to use us. Praise God. Praise God. And it was not by chance that when I was a teenager, I walked into a church pastored by veteran missionaries, Lee and Becky Sherry. Yes, I came out of the same church as Sister Overton. We were teenagers together in that church. And she would remember, she could tell you that in my late teen years and into my early 20s, I went through some trials, Brother Overton, where I had to look up to see the bottom. But I'm so thankful that I placed my life into his hands. Praise God, praise God. And even though I couldn't see it, he knew the thoughts that he thought towards me. He knew the plans that he had. And God was gracious. He put this man and woman into my life and they became my spiritual mum and dad. And they had a Bible college in Western Australia. And my husband came across Australia and went to Bible college. We fell in love and got married. And I thought life was going pretty well. But then God threw me a curveball and called brother and sister Sherry to leave Australia and go somewhere else. But God knew the thoughts and the plans that he was thinking beyond my wildest dreams. God started something that day that we've only realized that has come to pass in the last few years. God called them to the country of Fiji. And two years after that, God called brother and sister Sherry to the beautiful country of Vanuatu. Who would have thought that God would move us along. You know, I never forgot brother and sister Sherry. They were in my heart. They were my mum and dad. Both my husband and I, our hearts were knit with brother and sister Sherry. There was a physical and a spiritual connection between us. And God sent us to the Solomon Islands in His plan, sent us to Papua New Guinea. And when we deputized last time, we returned to Papua New Guinea never planning to leave. And we got back and day one, we knew something had changed. And God put Vanuatu in front of our face. There were three missionary families in Vanuatu. Couldn't be God. And we went into denial. We, no, can't be God. But it was God. And by 18 months later, April 2011, when we landed in Vanuatu, brother and sister Sherry were the only missionaries remaining in Vanuatu. And sister Sherry was 82 years old, desperately needing to retire. And as brother Overton will tell you, not wanting to retire but they desperately needed help. And we had 18 amazing months with brother and sister Sherry. But God had brought us there. It was His perfect time. It was His plan. It had been the thoughts that He was thinking from the beginning of time, but He started to bring it to few fruition the day that I walked into their church as a teenager. Praise God, September 2012 precious sister Sherry suffered a massive stroke and heart attack in our living room 
and God spared her life. I'm so thankful for that. Today, they live in Texas. They are retired, but their hearts ache for Vanuatu. But they felt that at long last, someone had come to help them, that they felt like they could hand the torch of revival for that nation, and they handed it to us. And we are so honoured and privileged. And there is revival happening in that nation. Brother and Sister Sherry had plans. They had dreams that they wanted to see happen. And although they will not be there to make them happen with God, we are honoured and privileged today to be the keepers of Brother and Sister Sherry's dream for the beautiful country of Vanuatu. God bless you and thank you for letting us be here this morning. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise God. The foolishness of God, the Bible says, is wiser than men. If God ever had a stupid day, it would be better than our best day by a long shot. I'm glad we can trust Him. Amen. Hallelujah. And I want to say thank you. Thank you for supporting and praying for missions outside of North America. Because you're in a mission field right here. Bottom line is we're all missionaries. Whether we've gone to the other side of the world or whether we're in the same town that we were born in and spend our whole life there, each and every one of us are missionaries. Praise God. And each and every one of us follow in the footsteps of the greatest missionary of all times, that was Jesus Christ. The Bible says, though he was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor, so that you and I, through his poverty, might become rich. Bottom line is, he left where he was, came down to where we were, so that we could go back to where he came from. Hallelujah. And that's what missions is all about. Whether it's leaving our country and going to another one, or whether it's leaving our front door and going to somebody next door. Whether it's leaving our comfort zone and inviting somebody to church. Whether it's overcoming our fear and teaching a Bible study. Whatever it is, every one of us leaves somewhere and goes somewhere when we tell somebody about Jesus Christ. Praise God. And so we are all in this together. Every time you hand out an invitation to someone to come to Friends Day or to, Bible, uh, to a Bible study or whatever. Just think you are emulating the greatest missionary of all, and that is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. And I say thank you for giving and for praying, not just as a missionary, but as the result of missions work. In 1953, the UPC sent brother and sister Glenn and Iris Bogue from Gary, Indiana, put them on a boat and sent them to Australia as missionaries. My parents, who had gone forward at a famous evangelist crusade, had put up their hand, had prayed the sinner's prayer. My parents still were hungry and felt like there must be something more from God. And they came in contact with brother and sister Bogue and one of their saints. And my parents were amongst one of the first dozen to be baptized in Jesus' name in the country of Australia. So when I say thank you for giving to the Lord and thank you for praying for missionaries, I don't just say that as a missionary, but I say that as the result and as the fruit of missions work. Because we have looked through the internet, we have trolled the net, the net, we have searched through the archives of religion in Australia. We cannot find anyone else that at that time was preaching this wonderful message in Australia. So thank you for giving to the Lord. As that song says, I was a life that was changed. Because when I was born, my parents had already accepted this truth and were able to introduce it into my life. And I thank God for it. Hallelujah. Back to the country of Vanuatu. When brother and sister Sherry went to Vanuatu, they, the motto of their ministry, they didn't say this, but I've looked at it, and uh, in, I would say it was 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 2. Because everywhere they went, they worked on training people. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. 
And that's what the Sherry's tried to do. And when they went to Vanuatu, there was a piece of property for sale. It was downtown. Uh, that's uh, just a Google Earth shot of the town that we live in. And this piece of property was for sale, but nobody wanted to buy it because it was a bushy area. And this was where the witch doctors would go and would practice all their incantations and take people into the bush and do horrible things. And so everyone had a great fear and there was a lot of superstition surrounding this piece of property. But there was a brother that came from Australia, a friend of the Sherry, saw the opportunity, went back to Australia, mortgaged his house and bought this piece of property for the church. Today, brothers and sisters, that same piece of property is one of the most sought after pieces of land in Vanuatu. That's a part of the view overlooking the bay. It overlooks lagoons as well. And there isn't a resort that wouldn't, doesn't want to build their motel, their resort on top of that hill. There isn't another church that doesn't want to have that property. But guess what, brothers and sisters? It's not for sale. It belongs to the UPCI, and it is the home of the Acts 2 Bible College, and it is training young men and women to go out and preach this gospel and reach their nation. Hallelujah. And so just another example of how God can take something that the devil does, take it, turn it around. As Brother William said it because of the times, he can override it, he can convert it, he can transform it, he can turn it around to his glory. Hallelujah. When the devil starts to do something or life itself starts to do something in uh, uh, and affect you, don't panic, brothers and sisters. Just hold even a little bit tighter to the hand of Jesus Christ because nothing takes him by surprise. There's nothing that he doesn't know about. He doesn't wake up and suddenly say, oh, what a surprise. I didn't know that was going to happen to you. No, he knows about it. He cares about you. He knows how many hairs are on your head. He knows even about every little sparrow that falls. He knows how to take care of what is his brothers and sisters. He will see you through. Praise God. And so this beautiful property is there for the glory of God. Hallelujah. I want to share a scripture with you this morning. Let's go to the book of Romans, chapter 1. Verse 1 is one of my favorites, but I won't emphasize it this morning, because. Uh, but it just talks about Paul and his slavery, his servanthood to Jesus Christ prioritize in being in a primary place over his office as an apostle. But if we drop down to verse 14, Paul says, I am a debtor both to the Greeks and the barbarians, both to the wise and the unwise. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. The gospel is powerful, brothers and sisters. Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Brothers and sisters, this message that you and I have, this thing that has been entrusted to our frail abilities and our simple minds. This thing that God has given us is extremely powerful. We had a brother come to church. The church that we pastor, let me just give you a tiny bit of background. The church that we pastor is the same church that brother and sister Sherry pastored. And we have our services in English. When we go to the village, we speak the pidgin English uh, of the place. Uh, but... In our services, uh, it's English. It's attached to the Bible school. We do English as a second language and all that kind of stuff. So uh, this, is, this helps them improve their English ability. Well, this brother came to church, and he speaks French and English. French is another main language there. And so he, he gave his heart to God. That's him being baptized. But he brought his mother with him as well. His mother came to church 
And she started to come, and through the worship service and through the preaching of the Word, she would just sit there and cry and cry, and people would pray with her, and God was doing good things in her life. After about six weeks, she came to the front of the church and caught me after church and came with her son. And she said, I want you to tell the pastor something. So her son translated. And then she said, tell the pastor I don't speak any English. And so Patrick, uh, the son, told me that. And then she started to cry again. She said, but tell him this. Every time I come to this church and he preaches in English, she said, I understand every word he says. Brothers and sisters, that's the power of the gospel. That's something you and I can't do, but God can do when he sees a hungry heart. Hallelujah. When someone is hungry for God, God will do anything, even go to the cross if you please. God will do anything to reach somebody that is hungry for Him. That is her getting baptized, God filled her with the Holy Spirit, and she still goes to the church that preaches in English, praise God, and is still living for God today. Hallelujah. When someone is hungry for God, it's amazing what God would do. That's why I pray. You know, Someone said, and it was said of the sons of Issachar, but someone repeated it early in my life when I was just a child. And they said, what my desire is, is to find out what God is doing and do it with Him. And that stuck with me from childhood. Find out what God's doing and do it with Him. And ever since then, I've been determined, I don't want to twist God's arm up His back, as it were, and try and force Him to do something that He's not ready to do. Kind of makes sense, doesn't it? But you know what? It's amazing how many times we knock ourselves unconscious teaching home Bible studies to people that really don't want to hear them. Hello? Sorry. <laughs> Warning. Common sense. <laughs> Hallelujah. We don't, you know what? At the same time, we're teaching a Bible study to someone that really does, isn't too interested. There's somebody across town that's ready to commit suicide. There's somebody across town that another organization is teaching a Bible study to that doesn't have all the truth. Hallelujah. So when I wake up in the morning, my prayer is, God, take me to somebody that's hungry. Help me meet somebody that is at the crossroads of their life that is ready to receive this truth, that is looking for an answer. Because feeding is a two-way street. Amen. If, you, if you've ever had a six-month-old and you've tried to put food in their mouth and they don't want to eat, you know what they do. They lock down. And they do this number and food ends up in their ear and food ends up in their hair and food ends up everywhere except in their stomach. Hallelujah. But when they're hungry, it doesn't even matter if it's not their favorite food. They're ready to eat it. Praise God. And there are people that are hungry. Hallelujah. I pray that as you hand out invitations to people to come to Friends Day and as you go on outreach on Saturday, I pray that God leads you to those that are looking for the answers. Hallelujah. Because we have the answer, brothers and sisters. We have the gospel. We have the truth. The answer's name is Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the, not, the life. We're not here trying to promote we've got a better program than another church. We're not here trying to say we've got a nicer building and we have a wonderful building and a wonderful program. But we have the answer. It's not a matter of trying to build a club. It's a matter of eternal destiny, brothers and sisters. If they don't find Jesus, Jesus Christ and the truth of the gospel of salvation, then they will spend an eternity separated from Him. Hallelujah. And we have the answer. Praise God. When Paul wrote that scripture in the book of Romans, he was writing to a group of people that he'd never even met. Paul didn't start the church in Rome. We sometimes think it is because it's kind of thrown in with the epistles, but we don't really know who started the church in Rome. Best guess is that it was somebody that was present on the day of Pentecost that just went back and started this group of believers in Rome. And so Paul had never taught them a home Bible study. Paul had never witnessed to them. Paul had never counseled to them. Paul had never uh, even met them. But he said, brothers and sisters, he said, I'm bringing you something that is going to be the answer to the situations that you are going through in life. 
He said, I've never met you. I've never been there. He said, but I have the answer. And the answer is the gospel of Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter what the problem is. It doesn't matter what the situation is. It doesn't matter what your friend's going through or your neighbor's going through. The answer is still the same. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And the gospel, just as a kind of a side note, the gospel is not just hearing the good news, but it's responding to the good news. The gospel, Paul uses this term like 60 times. And when he talks about the gospel, it's not just, well, hear about it and say amen. It's actually used in the sense of someone returning from a battlefield that is bringing back the news of victory. And when they come back to their hometown with the news of victory, as they burst through the gates or run down the center of the village street and talk about the victory, the people begin to rejoice and to celebrate what is happening. And the term gospel is a full circle. Until somebody responds to the gospel, until somebody acts on the news that they are hearing, it is no gospel. But as soon as they begin to respond to it, and act to it, and as we would say in fullness, obey it, then it becomes good news to that person. Hallelujah. So don't let anybody try and escape by just saying, well, I have the gospel. I believe on Jesus Christ. No, until that belief begins to cause a reaction in our life, it is just a dormant object. But as soon as it mixes with our faith and with our obedience and we begin to act on it, then, hallelujah, it really becomes a powerful gospel that can change anybody's life. Praise God. And that's the way God u- uh, that Paul uses, or God uses, this word evangelon, or this word gospel uh, in the book of Romans. Hallelujah. It's the message of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ received and responded to and obeyed in our life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Paul said something else very interesting. In verse 14 and 15, he said, I am a debtor. Let me see if I can back up there. This thing's got reverse on it. It's pretty cool. Paul said, I'm a debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and the unwise. So as much as is in me is, I'm ready to preach the gospel to those that are at Rome, to you that are at Rome also. Paul was going to be incarcerated in Rome. Paul was going to go through a whole lot of struggles in Rome. He was going to go through a a bunch of bad stuff. But he said, I have to go to Rome anyway. Because he said, I am a debtor. He uses this word debtor in a third person sense. In other words, tense. In other words, it's not like we often think like, suppose I borrowed $100 from Brother Overton and I said, I'm going to give it back to you in five years' time when I come back. No, I'm going to give it back to you uh, next month when I get paid, uh, but I want to borrow that. Then yes, I would be in debt. But that's not the way Paul uses this. It's not like we owe on a car payment or a note or a house payment, mortgage, whatever. No, the way Paul uses this word here is that, say, Brother Overton gives me $100 and says, this $100 It actually belongs to Pastor Libby, and when you see him, I want you to give it to him. Then I'm a debtor. I am in debt, but I'm not in debt to Pastor Overton. Once he's given the money to me, I am now in debt to Brother Libby. And until I give Brother Libby or Pastor Libby that money, I am a debtor to him. And that's what Paul is saying about this wonderful gospel. He said, I'm a debtor both to the Greeks and the barbarians, both to the wise and the unwise. He said, I have been given something and it doesn't belong to me. I have been given the gospel. I've been given the message of salvation. What have we that we did not receive from somebody else, he says. In other words, somebody gave it to us. 
Well, it doesn't matter if it was your parents or who it was. Somebody gave you the gospel, and of course, Jesus Christ made it all possible. But we were given the gospel. But guess what, brothers and sisters? It's not our gospel as such. It doesn't belong to us. It's not so that we can celebrate how many years we had the Holy Ghost or how many times we've been in church. It's not for us to just to get together and enjoy. No, Paul says, I'm a debtor. I'm a debtor. I'm going to be beaten. I'm going to be incarcerated. I'm going to go through hard times but I've got to go to Rome the center of civilization because I have a debt that I have to pay brothers and sisters the gospel that has been given to you and me does not belong to you and me no we are a debtor we owe our next door neighbor we owe the person that we work with we owe everybody on Saturdays to get out there in the streets and tell them about this gospel of salvation hallelujah and if we get to heaven and we still owe a debt God, have pity on our souls. It's not ours. It's not ours. The best attended service of any church, the best attended service in the program should be outreach on Saturday. Hallelujah. The brothers should stand up and say, hey, there's too many people coming. Amen. Hallelujah. We do it from day to day. We do it as we work. We do it casually, but it's wonderful when we can do it as an organized effort as well. Hallelujah. Anything organized will be a lot more effective. But we have a debt. And Paul said, I'm going to go and I've got to pay that debt. I want to say thank you from a missionary perspective and from a global view. I want to say thank you for helping to pay the debt to the rest of the world. Because as you've probably heard, it's a, you know, not everyone can go everywhere in the world all the time. We're not omnipresent. Amen. Anyone here that is omnipresent, just... Talk to your pastor afterwards and he'll help set you straight. (laughs) Have some prayer. Hallelujah. (laughs) Hallelujah. We're not omnipresent. And so that's how the body of Christ works around the world. We help each other to spread this gospel through prayers. And you guys have been supporting the work in the South Pacific for a long time. Thank you so much for helping to fulfill that debt. The brothers and sisters, I've only shared maybe one testimony. I may share another one or two just quickly. But the brothers and sisters that you are reaching around on the other side of the world, literally almost you could drill a hole through the middle of the globe and you would hit around Australia. You, you know, move a little bit west, uh, eastwards and you would, you would hit Vanuatu. On the opposite side of the globe, these people are so hungry for God. This sister here, let me... Uh, no, I don't have that one on there. There's a sister. I, you'll see her picture in the video in just a moment. A sister there uh, in Vanuatu that just graduated Bible school that walks two hours every day to get to classes and walks two hours home again. That's the hunger. Five days a week. Can't afford $1.50 on the bus each way. And so she gets up 5 o'clock in the morning to be in prayer at 8 o'clock every morning before classes start. The most amazing thing is she's never late. We've got, it's one of those human nature things. We've got people that live next door to the Bible school that are late. And this young lady gets up two hours before and has to walk two hours, gets up three hours, and she's, uh, Sister Grace, I don't think she's late one day in three years. It's like she just, it was her, it's so hungry for God, brothers and sisters. When we go to a, a place outside of the town, we live in a fairly, it's a touristy destination, uh, the city of Port Villa. Last year we had 152 cruise ships come through. So it's not like the jungles of Papua New Guinea. Um, But just outside the city is a third world country. Uh, It's all villages. And so when we go there, people come that don't normally attend church. And they'll come and they'll sit and they'll listen. And there's no building to have a service in when you go to a village. Because they'll have their local church that's okay for Sunday. But when a lot of people come, uh, there's no place. So we get out in the open. And you know what? It doesn't matter how long or how hot the sun gets, those people stay and listen to the Word of God. When we go, we'll preach on a weekend. It'll be Friday night, Saturday morning, Saturday lunchtime. They'll have a 
Q&A Saturday afternoon with leaders uh, from the area. They'll have a service again Saturday night, Sunday morning. You go home Sunday afternoon so you can preach, uh, teach Bible school on Monday. They will stay there. It doesn't matter how hot it gets. It doesn't matter if it begins to rain. It doesn't matter if the altar turns into mud. Those folk will, you know, it, it becomes a very holy atmosphere. And so I've not taken a lot of photos. I, I, now I'm wishing on deputation that I'd taken more. But those folk are so hungry for God, they will literally lie in that mud seeking God. Brothers and sisters, these are your brothers and sisters in the Lord. These are people you may never meet down here, but they are still the fruit of your ministry and your prayers and your financial support, yes, and as part of the kingdom of God. And so you won't get to meet them, but it doesn't matter how old they are. It doesn't matter how young. These people are so very, very hungry for God. Thank you for helping the gospel get to these people. Thank you for helping this wonderful message to reach these people. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes, you deserve a hand of praise. We've got a short multimedia I'm going to share with you uh, now, just kind of recapping a little and showing a bit more of what God is doing. And then a couple of comments, and I'll let your pastor take over this morning. Praise God. That should have sent. <laughs> then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? Australian-born Peter and Robin Gratian are not only missionaries themselves but are the result of missionary work. Peter was raised in this precious truth his parents having been amongst the first converts of pioneer missionaries Glenn and Iris Vogue. In the early 1970s, Brother Sism would come to Australia and show reel-to-reel -reel films of mission work around the world. It's not enough for them to be filled with the Holy Spirit, but we are to see that they become mature Christians, that they grow in Jesus Christ, that they are established in the faith. We are to establish congregations not only to win converts. Can you say amen? Amen. amen? amen. The mission's call was born in the heart of this little boy who could not understand why he was unable to control his tears as he watched those films. Peter met Robin in Bible College in Western Australia. This Bible College was started by veteran missionaries Lee and Becky Sherry who came to Australia in the late 1960s. After brother and sister Sherry left Australia for Fiji and later Vanuatu, the Gratians sat under the ministry of yet another missionary couple, Robert and Aretha Forbush. Answering the call of God at a general conference in Australia in 1991, Peter and Robin and their two little boys, Jason and Nathaniel, went as pioneer missionaries under UPC Australia to the Solomon Islands. For five years, the Gratians worked with these beautiful Melanesian people. Much seed was sown. Eight churches were planted. The Pentecostal Bible College of the Solomon Islands was established and a great harvest was being reaped. In 1997, the Gratians had to leave the Solomons due to circumstances outside of their control. It was a sad time, especially for two little boys who thought that they were Solomon Islanders. But God is never taken by surprise and he turned all things to work for good. For the next five years, the Gratians were blessed to pastor in the city of Cairns in far north Queensland, Australia, ministering to a church that was 75% Torres Strait Islander. A daughter, Kerry Sue, joined the family in 1998 while in Cairns. 
The unmistakable call of God back into missions came again in 2002 and the Gratians went under UPCI to Papua New Guinea. Jesus paid it all, all Papua New Guinea, a nation steeped in fear, witchcraft and ancestor worship, but desperate and hungry to find the living God. For nearly 10 years, the Gratians labored in Papua New Guinea. One does not go to Papua New Guinea and leave unchanged. The people of this nation will wrap themselves around your heart. The Gratians had every plan to spend the remainder of their missionary life in this country they loved so very much. But God, in his great wisdom, was closing the door for the Gratians to remain in Papua New Guinea and was opening a door greater than anything they could have ever imagined. Vanuatu, the beautiful pearl of the South Pacific, it has been the home for the last 20 years to the Sherry family. With God moving two missionaries out of Vanuatu to other fields, brother and sister Lee Sherry alone remained in this nation. We give honour to this mighty man and woman of God. Many months before the call came from Global Missions and long before the need was apparent, God had started working in the Gratians' hearts, pulling, calling, uprooting and turning their eyes toward Vanuatu. Peter and Robin are honoured today to continue the work started by brother and sister Sherry, Robin's parents in the family. It has been their privilege to stand beside them, to lift the heaviness of the work from off their shoulders, to honour them and to love them, and to now allow them to retire, knowing that their work, indeed God's work, will continue in the land that they will always call home. Vanuatu, formerly known as New Hebrides, discovered by and prophesied over by Portuguese explorer Fernandes de Cairouche in 1605. Thinking he had discovered Australia, he called Vanuatu the great south land of the Holy Spirit, naming two of our more northern islands, Espiritu Santo and Pentecost. There is a spiritual battle being fought. The combination of European influence and Melanesian witchcraft has made Vanuatu a long-standing stronghold of the enemy. But with a Bible college turning out young men and women with the power and anointing of God, with churches proclaiming his word, and with a God who has already decided 400 years ago that this nation belongs to him, the devil doesn't have a chance. The Gratian's eldest son, Jason, and his wife, Janie, remain today in Vanuatu as furlough replacements. The spirit of revival is in this nation. As never before, the ministers are united in one desire and one goal, to see the enemy defeated and the seed of prophecy sown 400 years ago come to pass. A mighty outpouring of the Holy Spirit from the very northern islands down, we claim Vanuatu for Jesus. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, that's a part of your church. That's a part of what God is doing around the world. Hallelujah. And I want to say thank you. You know, we are the blessed ones. I've got to stand as missionaries. I've got to stand at the edge of the ocean and with 10 ministers lined up in the ocean and lines of people waiting out to be baptized. And it still took us over two hours to baptize everyone that wanted to be baptized. I've got to stand and to be a part of that. And, you know, that's nothing. Money can't buy that kind of experience. Hallelujah. To see people come run to the altar, throw themselves down before God, and instantly be either healed or filled with the Holy Spirit or both. 
Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, we serve a wonderful God. He's reaching souls all around this world. I'm so glad the gospel works. I'm so glad the blood has never lost its power. Hallelujah. You know, if the devil had any brains at all, he would have left that cross lying on the ground. Because Jesus had said plainly and clearly, he said, I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. And this spake he signifying what death he would die. If the devil had been listening, he would have just left him lying there somehow. But you know, as soon as that cross began to come up off the ground, the drawing power of Jesus Christ began to work, even to one of the thieves next to him. And it's still working today, brothers and sisters. It's still reaching. It's still pulling. It is still tugging. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we travel, we try and do a couple of things for the folk there that they can't do for for themselves One thing I want to mention is you saw the blue building, the Bible school building uh, that was there. I don't know if you guys were a part of it. I'm sure you were in one way or another. I'm I'm sure you were. Um, But I just want to let you know that that building, the funds have been raised to complete that building. And so in the photo, it's not quite complete. uh, But I know brother and sister Sherry raised some funds quite a while ago, maybe five years ago. And uh, we've completed it uh, on this deputation already. So we thank God for that. That building is done. Amen. (laughs) Hallelujah. And uh, so I wanted to say that because uh, I know that funds were raised uh, for that. And we're still working on getting desks and chairs and furniture and things like that. Uh, but God will take care of that. Praise God. And one, uh, one of the projects we are raising funds for is for Bibles. There's one little Christian bookstore in Vanuatu. And for someone to walk in there and buy a paperback, good news, quality Bible, they're going to pay the equivalent of give or take about 40 US dollars. That was four zero, and they don't earn as much as we do anyway, you know. So it's pretty hard for them to buy a Bible. Uh, Pentecostal Publishing House gives us these wonderful, uh, well-bound Bibles with the Bible study in the front and everything like that. We get them for seven dollars ninety-nine. So what we're saying is that for every eight dollars that someone donates, you can place a Bible in the hand of someone that will value it and take care of it and treasure it. And that will probably only have some tattered paperback version of a Bible until they get one of these. And so uh, we already have some we're going to ship back, uh, but we're raising funds for these Bibles. So if you want to buy a Bible for someone in Vanuatu, every $8, we have a donation box on the table. You can give it straight to your pastor. Either way, we'll run it through the church Uh, And you'll be able to uh, give someone, maybe apart from the Holy Ghost, the most precious gift, well, with the Holy Ghost that they could ever have. And that is the Word of God uh, in their hands. Praise God. Thank you so much for letting us be here. One of the things I like to share as I get ready to hand back to your pastor this morning, uh, and you would have seen a little bit of this last time because it's not brand new, uh, but is this demonstrates the hunger of what God is doing. We had an evangelist come and preach. And uh, as he was getting into his message, he was just kind of warming up about five minutes into his message. And this was in Papua New Guinea. Uh, But it's the same. The hunger is the same. And uh, as he was just getting wound up, he made a statement. He said, if, you, if there's something you need from God, you can have it right now. He was just, I don't know, he was probably thinking about what he was going to say next. He just kind of said that statement. He was warming up his engine, getting ready to preach. As he said that statement, as he said, if there's something you need from God, you could, even, you could get it right now. This is what happened, brothers and sisters. The people got up from where they were and literally charged to the altar, threw themselves before God, and God started filling hundreds with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's the kind of hunger. It's not like pulling teeth. It's not like you have to get it just right. No, they are so desperate for God. They're so hungry to hear about the gospel. He looked at me. I looked at him, Brother Overton, and I said, it's over. 
I said, we're just going to have an altar service right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. But these are the people that this gospel is reaching. Thank you for giving to the Lord. God bless you. Pastor Over. Amen. What a tremendous presentation this morning. I don't know about you, but my heart is touched. Amen. Hallelujah. And thank you, brother and sister Gratian. Thank you for taking the gospel to Vanuatu. I think we ought to just stand and have a word of prayer for them this morning. What do you say? Hallelujah. Would you just, hallelujah, reach your, if you're over there by the sister Gratian and Carrie Sue, just pray for them and Brothers, if you'll pray for Brother Gratian, Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray this morning, Lord, that you would bless the Gratians and bless their efforts in Vanuatu. We thank you for the harvest of souls that you have already given, Lord. We thank you for every miracle that you have produced. And we ask you, O oh God, let a divine presence be upon them. I pray, O oh Lord, give them greater results than they could ever even begin to imagine or anticipate. Meet their financial needs, O oh Lord, I pray, for we realize, hallelujah, that with you all things are possible this morning, Father. We love you today, God. I pray for souls. I pray for souls in the country of Vanuatu this morning. Continue to pour out your spirit. Continue to see people repent and be baptized and filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. I ask you this morning, Lord, just to bless brother and sister Gratian and their family. Meet their every need. Bring comfort. Bring peace to their soul. Help them to return to their homeland quickly, I pray. Not our will, Lord, but thine be done. I give you praise. I give you honor. I give you glory. Why don't you just thank God right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God is so good. God is so good. The scripture says, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. I'm glad somebody preached the gospel to me. How about you? I'm glad somebody preached the gospel to me. Hallelujah. Personal testimony. Brother and Sister Gratian weren't there, but when Brother and Sister Sherry first went to Vanuatu, I preached their first general conference. I was supposed to have been the day speaker and ended up being the day and the night speaker. And just by the pictures, I can tell you, God has done a tremendous work in the country of Vanuatu. Hallelujah. And I can't help but throw this in because it's just imprinted in my mind. When we went, there wasn't a church building to have church in and they had erected some poles and put some tarps up because the sun is very hot and they get some pretty good rains. And one night as we were preaching, it came a thunderous storm. And I thought, well, it's over. Those folks, they stood in the rain. They literally stood in the rain to hear the preached word of God. My heart is still touched to this day. You know, if it snows, we can't come to church. If it's too hot and air conditioned and isn't just right, I can't have church. But these folks are so hungry that they are stand in the rain to hear the word of God. Yes, 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 yes. Oh God, help me to have a hunger. Help me to have a thirst for your power, for your blessing, for your anointing in my life. Help me to realize, hallelujah. It's not about what kind of car I drive or house I live in. It's about how much of Jesus I have on the inside of my soul. I want to be more like you, Lord. I want to be more like you. Let's just love him one more time. Will you lift your hand? I love you this morning, God. 
I'm grateful for what you've done in my life. I'm grateful for the Holy Ghost this morning. I'm grateful for your presence, O oh Lord. Have your will and your way in my life, I pray today. Hallelujah. Before I dismiss you this morning, I was just going to give them a, try to give them a good offering and send them on their way. But I feel impressed of the Lord today to ask the ushers to come. I'm just going to put a couple of, of baskets down here. And if you'd like to help us give them a special offering to meet some of the needs that they have, Bibles or furniture in the school or whatever, let's dig down a little bit deeper and give a little bit more. It's making a vast difference in their lives. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray again over this offering. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for all the blessings that you have given unto us. Oh, Lord, we can't even begin to comprehend about the conditions and the, the sacrifices that are made all across the world. But I especially thank you for the country of Vanuatu today. I ask you to bless the gift and the giver in this offering this morning that we can help to purchase some Bibles and some school furniture, oh God. Hallelujah, that men and women might learn the truths of your word. Hallelujah, and evangelize their world. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray. And everybody say amen. amen. As Brother Tabars comes and they sing a song, would you just march and come and give this morning? God bless you. and thirsty and looking for you 
oh God. Hallelujah. Help us to, I pray God, be a light that shines in darkness. I pray in the wonderful and the precious name of Jesus. Let your blessings be upon your people as we leave this place today, God. We ask your will to be fulfilled in every life. In Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. Amen. Why don't you greet one another one more time? God bless you. You're dismissed in the name of the Lord this morning. You're my, my sister. So take me by.